Hi everyone! For your next exercise, you will have to create a simple construction site in 3ds Max. For this exercise, marks will be given on your ability to create and assign appropriate materials to objects and the ability to map the textures onto 3D objects with no obvious seams or texture stretching. Now, before you can assign and map your materials, you will first have to model your objects. For this exercise, you will need to create at least these three items. A warning or safety barrier, construction cones, and lastly, road signs. Now, you may add additional objects of your choice to make your work more interesting, but these three items are the minimum requirement. Before we start modeling, let's take a look at the traffic cone that we are about to model. If you look at the traffic cone, or this picture of the traffic cone, you're going to notice that it's made out of two obvious objects. On top, we have a cone-like structure resting on top of a flattened looking box. The box itself does not have sharp corners, the corners are rounded out. In 3D, the simplest way to tackle this exercise is to very simply put a cone on top of a flattened box. But that would mean that this object is made out of two items. Now, if you want a better quality model, what we have to do is to make this whole cone out of one object. For this demonstration, I'll show you how you can create your traffic cone out of one object. Now, first of all, let's start off with a box. The length and width of this box should be the same number whatever it is and do not make it very tall. After creating your box, align it so that it's in the center of your wall space. Next, convert it into an editable poly. After converting your box into an editable poly, let's round out the corners. To do that, we can use a function called chamfer. In edge mode, select the corners of the box and use the function called chamfer. Click on the settings dialog increase the distance between the segments and increase the number of segments to 2. Once you have chamfered the corners, you'll notice that your box is no longer in quads. That means one polygon no longer has four edges to one face. To make the polygons in our model all quads again, we can use a function called cut. Cutting allows us to create edges from one vertex to another vertex. When you use the function cut, it's going to create an edge from one vertex to another vertex. So if you click on first one vertex and then the next vertex, you'll notice an edge appear. Now to end that function, right mouse button click. To totally exit out of the function, right mouse button click twice. Make sure you tidy up the polygons at the top and the bottom of your box. Now we need to add more polygons to our object. Select a ring of edges going forward and backwards away from camera and click on the function called connect. Do the same for the ring of edges going from left to right. Before we extrude out our cone, let's use the function called inset. If we extrude the polygons as it is now, we will just be extruding out a square. So let's round out the corner of this inset by going into vertex mode and selecting the corners of the inner polygons and scale them down so that it looks more like a circle. Make sure the bottom circle is slightly smaller than the circle on the top of the object. Next, select the polygons at the top and extrude to appropriate height. Scale the top down. Do the same for the bottom polygons as well. If it's hard to see what you're doing, you can press F3 on keyboard to see the wireframe of your object so that you can scale appropriately. You now have a very low poly count version of your traffic cone. If you apply smoothing to your object right now, you'll look like your object is somewhat melting. To solve this problem, use each loop to tighten up corners. There, your object looks much better now. Now let's apply materials to our object. You can access the material editor by pressing M on keyboard. And let's drag out a physical material. To view the material in your viewport, make sure you click on the button called Show Shaded Material in Viewport. To assign the material onto your object, click on the output socket and drag it onto your object. We'll click on the material to show the material parameters editor. Change material mode to advance. Changing the base color changes the color of your object. And since we are building a traffic cone, we do not need any reflections, so reduce the number of reflections to nothing. 
Let's take a quick render. Press Shift Q to see the end result. Now, we have a very nice orange looking cone. But this cone will not be completed without its two signature white rings. So let's head on to Photoshop. Create a blank canvas and fill it up with a base color orange. Next, add two white stripes. Save this image into the image subfolder of your project folder. Now let's assign this image to our material. Drag a bitmap from the material browser and select the image that you have just created. Now link the bitmap to the base color map of that material. You'll notice that the colors or the patterns don't fall nicely across the object. This is because the texture map requires mapping coordinates. To assign mapping coordinates to your texture, choose the modifier called Unwrap UVW from the modifier list. What we are doing in the unwrapping process is to break down the polygons into smaller pieces so that it's easier to map certain patterns onto certain parts of your object. The end goal is to really have as few distortions as possible in your texture. I'm going to create a seam at the very top of the cone as well as the bottom part of the cone. I will be creating seams at the bottom of the base as well, as well as the corners, as well as along the cone. Once I'm done, I'm going to click on the Open UV Editor and a new window will appear. Notice how moving the polygons in your Edit UV Editor changes the surface information of your object in scene. What we'll be doing now is to adjust the polygons in the UV Editor so that it projects patterns onto areas that you want the patterns to appear on your object. In Polygon Mode, select one polygon of the cone and then click on the Expand Polygon Selection to Seams. Click on the projection type by cylinder. Change the align options to Z. Notice how the polygons line up very neatly in the UV editor. Repeat the same process on the other side of the cone. For the rest of the polygons, just flatten, flatten them out. Now since all these parts are going to be orange in colour, I don't really care about the size. I'm just going to scale them down so that they fit nicely in onto the texture map in an orange area. Once I'm done, I'll exit out of this uh, UV map, unwrap UV, and notice how there's some distortion on your cone. Sometimes that happens. So to fix this, let's go back into our UV editor. Let's first move the unwanted parts. With all the vertex of the cone selected, under explode, choose the function called break. Let's scale it down so that the texture uh, fits nicely onto the object. Place the other parts back onto the texture, and you're done.